everywhere that human beings have lived, uh, whenever they have lived, always they've been faced with uh, three inescapable problems. One, how to earn their livelihood from the soil. Second, how to get along with their fellow human being. And third, uh, how to get along with themselves. Uh, now it so happens that the great enduring civilizations are also three in number. Uh, East Asia, China for short, South Asia, India for short, and the West. Now, my thesis is uh, that in their great historical uh, developments, these three civilizations have uh, poured more of their attention uh, into one of these problems, but differently. In the West, we have uh, paid attention to nature. E China has paid, poured its intellectual energy uh, into uh, human relations, sociology for short. And India has uh, concentrated uh, more on the psychological. So we have uh, the scientific, the sociological, and the psychological. Those emphases uh, have caused them to deal with age in distinctive ways. We in the West, uh, the West has concentrated more on nature and has produced science, but uh, it has managed aging uh, miserably far worse than the other two because uh, with their emphasis on the physical and nature, that puts the emphasis on the body. And uh, the body ages and deteriorates. Uh, and uh, therefore, they have emphasized uh, 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 a wrong approach to this. Uh, they, uh, we try to cover it up in the West with lovely metaphors of the sunset years and the autumn colors. Uh, we don't believe a bit of it. What we in the West believe is when you're 40, you're over the hill, and when you're over the hill, you pick up speed. That's <laughs> the West on aging. So do you think of yourself as an old man? Uh, yes, uh, I'm told that, and uh, uh, it's sort of creeps up on one so incrementally that uh, uh, you don't realize that you've uh, crossed the line and you're old. Uh, but now let me face the question, uh, do I feel old? Uh, yes, there is evidence. Uh, uh, I've been very fortunate in my health, but I uh, was smitten nine years ago with osteoporosis, and that means I'm, my spine cannot support my back. And uh, to walk, uh, to steady myself, 
as my friends well know, I have to hold on to their uh, arm. And uh, so it takes, uh, uh, I'm, uh, I used to, you know, I played college tennis and my body was, but uh, okay. And there's another way. Uh, I sleep a lot more. And uh, I'm a good sleeper. <laughs> so I notice uh, that I am old by those two primary. Oh, and another is that uh, uh, deafness has approached me. And I'm very grateful to technology for uh, keeping me in the communication circle. Do you ever wish you could be young again? Uh, you know, I have a little uh, characteristic whimsy. And uh, I've been interviewed maybe 500 times. And once in a long while, uh, someone comes up uh, with a question I've never thought of. And my knee-jerk response is, darn you for <laughs> asking me a question I've never thought of. Uh, so I never thought, uh, do I wish I were young? No. Uh, no, categorically no. That was right then. But I, uh, I, it took a lot of energy and uh, I am glad to say that was fine then, but I've done that, and there's no wish to repeat it. Thank you. With your own aging process, do you think of it as an ascent or as a descent? Well, with the body, it's very clear. It's a descent. Well, with the... With the mind and the spirit, uh, uh, it's easy to say the ideal, it's an ascent. It should be uh, an increase in understanding. And this has uh, recently become the more important point for me. Uh, increase in understanding and acceptance. Uh, I love uh, St. Paul's statement in one of his letters, uh, I have learned whatsoever condition I find myself in, there in to be content. I think that's wonderful. And uh, I, I am practicing that. And uh, I have to uh, uh, admit, uh, uh, without bragging, we, we don't think about that evaluation thing. I think that I uh, am on balance, more content at this stage in my life. Fewer uh, ups and downs and so on, more even keel. Not only have you studied these traditions, but you've had a life of introspection. And as it turns out, you've lived longer than many of your teachers. Many of the individuals whose work you admired and studied and speak of uh, lived far less long than you've lived. What have you made of these additional years beyond what your teachers could make of their 60 or 70 years of life? It's common knowledge that I was uh, a close friend of Aldous Huxley. And once when I was driving him home from a lecture, why he uh, said, Houston, uh, you know, it's rather embarrassing to 
have spent one's whole life pondering the human condition and uh, come up with nothing more profound than try to be a little kinder. Well, uh, in a way, he just claimed he was a very modest person, uh, profundity, but in another way, that, that's exactly right. So uh, I have, uh, it has, uh, with each uh, passing year, it uh, becomes more evident that this is the basic human project uh, to be a little kinder in one's uh, uh, dealings with other people. How would you characterize the state of your mind? Well, I uh, think I touched on that when I said I am content. Now, I think there's another thing that comes into this matter of aging that we have not mentioned before. And this is one's attitude towards death. If one is not afraid of death, then uh, aging, which slopes inevitably towards that moment, uh, holds no great fear. Explain that. Explain it? Yeah. Well, okay. I'm going to put it in my Christian idiom, but I'm, I, I've had a lot of practice at this, and I can translate it into other traditions when asked for. Uh, the Christian view is uh, that if you have lived your life reasonably well, uh, uh, you will go to heaven. This is the vernacular, what you said. And I think, uh, I think that it's uh, basically right, whatever words you want. The light on the television screen never goes off. Uh, what we have no idea of is what the images on that television screen will be after we, and, and this is a useful phrase from the India Indian, after we drop the body. We don't know, but the light is never going to go off. Do you find yourself, as you age, altering your view about how much fear you have, or no fear, or you came to this many years ago and it's, it's remained, this absence of fear? Well, uh, now, uh, you will not let me weasel out, but I'm going to put it slightly differently. Mm -hmm. uh, if one how does one feel about one's life when one nears the end of it? And uh, this is also another recent realization, namely that if you're happy about your life, then you're content to just uh, uh, let it drop away like a leaf falling from a tree. You have a far bigger bank of knowledge than most people have, about, particularly about what the, what the different religious traditions think what happens at the end of this physical life. But I'd like to know what you believe is going to happen to Houston Smith at the end of this life. Well, uh, his... Uh, um, television screen is not going to go dead. And, uh, but part of what makes it interesting is that at this stage, I have no idea what the images will be. 
Uh, but, and that's interesting. When you personally envision the transition out of this body, does it, do you perceive it as something that's abrupt? One second you're this, and next second you're in some other form? Or do you see it as something that is fluid? No, it will be uh, abrupt, and it will come as a surprise. But I, I have pondered this a little bit. And uh, uh, let me make my point by, by way of a, a cartoon. You know, cartoons uh, are uh, intended to be funny and are funny, but they are also very wise at times. And I remember a cartoon of a man on a, a cliff looking out over a beautiful sunset and the caption ran, man enjoying himself enjoying the sunset. <laughs> in other words, the attention was on his enjoyment rather on the sunset. Now, uh, that carries over uh, and I creates a little wondering on my part about when I drop the body. Uh, I am uh, at peace and uh, uh, persuaded uh, that it will be uh, glorious as heaven is supposed to be. But wh what I don't know is whether that glory will totally absorb my attention or whether there will still be some remnant of attention on Houston Smith enjoying the glory of heaven. Uh, I hope it's not that, but who knows. Do you have an expectation that there will be a reincarnated you that will appear somewhere, sometime? Uh, there is, uh, reincarnation is sure, uh, but where or when, uh, the classic Indian doctrine of reincarnation is you are reborn in a new body on this earth. Uh, well, uh, possibly, but I'm not uh, invested in that. It may be in an unknown land, if land even is a, well, it's a metaphor for it. If you were to think of one song that best tells the story of your life, what song would that be? Let me see. Uh, how can I keep from singing? Do you know that song? <laughs> I do not. Well, you can edit it out of the <laughs> no, film, please. but it's a wonderful song. <laughs> My life flows on in endless song above earth's lamentations. I hear that sure but far off tune that spells a new creation. Midst all the sorrows and the strife, I hear that music ringing. It sounds an echo in my soul. How can I keep from singing? Well, you asked for it, so you got it. If there were one prayer, a prayer, prayer that best reflected your deepest wishes. What prayer would that be? Okay. 
um, gone, please increase uh, my love for my fellow uh, companions and my understanding of life with its uh, profound mystery. And that prayer comes from? Me. <laughs> and so the last question is the question that, what would you like to ask of yourself? Uh, I would like to ask myself uh, what I would hope my last words would be. Um, and there's a little story uh, behind this. Uh, little in the sense of short, but momentous. Uh, St. John Chrysostom. He uh, crossed, uh, uh, Russian, crossed uh, the Tsarina for neglecting the poor. And she, in her absolute power, ordered him uh, to be dragged to death behind a chariot. He was deeply loved by the people. And so uh, in that scene on both sides, throngs of people mourning for his death. And it is said that one of them picked up his last words. Thanks, thanks for everything. Praise, praise for it all. I would wish that those could be my last words. Thank you for allowing me to interview today. You're most welcome. Where did they find you? <laughs> Boy, I mean, uh, uh, yes, I've been on both right. sides of this interview thing, and you had the hardest job. No, I had an, you, were, you were incredibly easy to interview. Well, you I made wish it easy for me, but the interviewer has to be listening to what the interviewee is saying and thinking ahead yes. to the next question. Split attention. My life flows on in endless song Above earth's lamentation I hear the real though far off hymn That hails a new creation No storm can shake my inmost calm While to that rock I'm clinging It sounds an echo in my soul How can I keep from singing.